I don't know. What do I think about hate? I don't know, Johnny. I mean, that's a good question, though. That's a good question. I don't think hate exists. How's that? There's no such thing as hate, man. Hate is only derision and sabotage and bad voodoo directed towards an element of yourself. Hate is never directed elsewhere. It's always directed at the self. And I'm talking about no matter what. And I'm, I'm saying if you are, if you hate a race, those thoughts, the energy that's aroused from you to produce hate is an energy that is not purposefully directed at something. It is an energy that's aroused from you that is inverted into your own self. And when you look at abuse, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about abuse. Not many people know the meaning of the word. When you look at that, not something to be hated. But look at it in the shoes of a god. You are looking at your world, and your children were abusing each other. Hate is not exactly the word you'd be bringing up. You'd be looking for a word that is not in English. For starters. For starters, whatever we're trying to define here, whatever a god would feel upon looking at abuse, the word does not exist in English. I'm sure we can all know that. So you're at a disadvantage. You get what I'm saying? Do you know what sort of a fundamental disadvantage that makes it impossible for you to get anywhere for your whole life? Injustice? Blake? No, 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 no. You don't quite get it yet. The word that you're looking for has been removed from your language, so you cannot define it. Do you get what that means? Do you get how heavy that is? God being angry in the Old Testament and us being made in the image of God. Any God that's going to demand a uh, killing of a, of, a, of a son is not God, it's Satan. Okay, let's get things fucking straightened, straightened out, okay? Satan asks that of a father, not God. I think we can all agree upon that. Anything that anything that demands that you kill a son is something you point the knife at in the sky and you say, F I'll kill you. How else do you explain it? Any god that demands that is no god at all. It's a dead thing that doesn't even know it's dead. It thinks it's god, but it knows its days are numbered. That's no god. That's a demon. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to, what do you want me to apologize? For some maniac spig plate of spaghetti in the sky? Fuck no. Are you kidding me? How do you expect things in this world to get better if nobody hates bad things? Or have you come to the conclusion that there's no helping this world ever, no matter what? No, 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 I wouldn't say that. There is wisdom on one hand, and then there is knowledge and emotion on the other hand. I mean, I know there's two things. You can use one or the other if you felt like it. You have to distinguish between wisdom and an emotion that is used against you only. Um, an emotion that exists only to be used against you. Look, I know, I know that Christ, that, G, that Jesus, there were many Christs. I think we all know that Christ is in Krishna. I think you'd be a moron not to see that connection. You'd be stupid. But Jesus, in that incarnation of the Christ, I mean, they said he said he came with a sword, and I understand the sword that he came with, but nobody else does. Nobody else is gonna understand is going to understand the sword of wisdom versus the axe of hatred. Who else is going to understand that? I'm sure many people, I'm sure they do. But you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm reaching. A sword is not an axe. When people say. Jesus came with a sword, that means he was like a political guy, you should overthrow kings. That's an axe, that's not a sword. It's a sword of wisdom. There's a sword of wisdom which is Christ. There's a sword of knowledge which is hatred. When you have wisdom, you see things that are violent. You see things that are abusive. You see those things as what they are. Pathetic, poor, dead creatures that don't even deserve to live. It's not hatred that exercises that chaff. It's not knowledge, it's not hatred. It's not. It's something that goes beyond. I want to say a wisdom of knowing the mechanism behind the adversary. 
the adversarial nature of wisdom and its opposition to knowledge. A Christ always comes with a sword, but the sword is to cut down a social order or a reproductive strategy or to implement another veil. There's always another veil because you don't understand the, s the truth and the wisdom. It cuts through the matrix. You don't understand what the sword is. An ax cuts through plate. It cuts through armor. A sword, it cuts through fabric of reality. You know how I've, I've been saying for years that evil shrivels and is destroyed, is very easily destroyed. The subtle knife. What a name, Jam. If anything that his dark materials spawned, it's the subtle knife, which was, I'm sure that's probably from the Bible or Shakespeare. I'm sure. It's not from, it's not from him. I know that. But this is a subtle knife because it's not identifiable as a weapon of war. People don't understand warfare, but I'm not getting too much into that. I'm not a general of warfare. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. I go out of my way not to have it. But there is something about that. There is no other side. There are people that say that Christ was militant and the sword meant insurrection. Clearly it wasn't. And nailed him to a cross. He unraveled the cube. All those who unravel the cube are nailed to it. I think we all know that by now. I know that sword. It speaks. I know it. It is in my writings. I know it well for years. Many years have I known this sword. Many years. Many years have I sought to understand it. Unraveled cube is salvation. It seems so, space. How else can you not not be sucked back into this matrix? And it's something to consider. That sword, no one. Very few people will understand the nature of that sword. Even fewer people will be able to understand its wielding when they finally see it. They will. We would never be able to understand how to wield it invincibly. The truth is one thing, but there is also the wielding of the truth. That's why you see so much failure. You see people that say the truth, but they don't know how to wield the truth. They don't know how to wield the vehicle of the truth. Those are two different things. There is the truth, then there is the vehicle of the truth. Not many are going to understand that. That's why most people are useless. They might have the truth on their lips, but they do not know how to wield it. There is the sword, then there is the use of the sword. There is the sword, there is the wielding of it. Christ didn't teach the sword. He taught the wielding of it. He taught the truth. He taught the wielding of the truth. If you cannot wield the truth, you are decimated, even if you are professing inarguable truth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're spitting the truth. Facts don't matter. Truth doesn't matter. It's the wielding of the truth. It's the manipulation of reality. It is the magic. Wielding of the truth is magic. Wielding of the truth is wisdom. Wisdom can be bent also. Wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is knowing the truth and wielding the truth. Knowledge is knowing the truth. It doesn't matter if you know it. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can have, you can have it to yourself, but if you know it, it doesn't matter to other people. You cannot proliferate it. You cannot procreate it unless you know how to wield it. I am hell-bent on, on wielding only what increases quality of life and what will help better preparing for the afterlife. That wielding is what I'm interested in. You seem to understand what I said. I don't expect people to understand what I say, but that is a very stone table deep magic ancient truth let me just spell it out for you the people that make a lot of money talking the truth still not wielding of it though their truth is easily mocked it's easily torn down it's easily picked apart it's easily crucified even though it is the truth they don't speak the truth though do they if you don't wield it it's not spoken when the world gets bent enough you can kill truth you can, but you don't kill truth by killing truth. You kill truth by killing those who can wield it. That's why you kill comedy first. It's no big deal. It's a playbook. It's been played many, 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 many times over. It's a very old play, not a new play. 
Very, very old. And it's in some ways unassailable. It's unassailable by the average Joe. Sure, sure, sure. But it's also unassailable by the fucking nerds that think they're masters of philosophy online. It is unassailable, especially to them. They're even worse than the, than the dumbass rubes. Because the dumbass rubes can s at least be able to see truth. But the big philosophy nerds out there, they're set in their big brains. Don't be sitting there thinking I have some sort of a big brained ego on the other end over here that I'm trying to sort of teach everyone like that. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm here to learn. Uh, so I'm not crippled by that. I'm not crippled by the worthless nerds that read freaking I don't even know, some German philosopher that got molested by his, his uncle when he was two or something like that. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in the guy that blows his fucking brains out. I'm not interested in the guy that goes so fucking insane he throws all of his papers in, in the fucking fire because he's insane. You know what I mean? Like, that's the, that's, that's the exact, that's the sort of stuff I run from. Advice from people like that is what I run from. Uh, if, I want, if I want advice to ha on how to have sex with my sister or my mother or to get molested by an uncle, uh, then I'll study the, then I'll study the, the philosophers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit's crap, dude. That shit's crap. They're all lame. They're all in hell. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The philosophers, nerds. Those people are crippled by the light. Light of knowledge is what blinds them. They have their heads filled with the knowledge that they have. Knowledge is blinding. People first have to get that through their head. Knowledge is blinding. Knowledge is not good. You think it's good, but it's not. Is knowledge Lucifer's lantern enter at 100%? 100%. You are made big by the knowledge. You are made big by the money, by the material. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man into the gates of heaven. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I'm saying. Knowledge is like money. You can always collect it and you can never have enough. That's why nerds are the worst. It's because they're filled with horseshit and it would take them 10 years to deprogram. Knowledge is a millstone. And going back to the God, the, ra the anger and the rage, just like with a child. If you're disciplining a child and you're using violence, look, you get what I'm saying. This is a rhetorical. It's not out of hate. It's out of doing your best and destroying yourself to try to get your child to wake up. That's what God does. Destroys itself to get its children to wake up. That's why the world is hell! You think it's easy for God? Every missing of the mark of moral character is an abomination and equal standing to murder. You get that? That's not hatred. It goes beyond hatred. As a parent, you can never truly hate your child. It's not possible. Even if you kill them, it's not possible to hate them. There is no hatred in wisdom. I understand where you're coming from. But even in the past, when back in the day, in an inner city, and I'm talking 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, whatever. Let's say if there was a weird guy that was, he sort of had a, an interest in children, you know what I mean? And if they, were to ha if they were to get that person, throw them off the top of a building, or throw them down the stairs, that's not hatred. It's protecting children. That's not hatred. But I get what you're saying when you say hatred is required to make a change. I understand what you're saying, but it's not. Hatred is used against you by the military, with military means. When you use fire, you know what you get thrown at you, right? And I understand Michael's sword was flaming, but it wasn't flaming with a material fire, it was very much spectral. It was very much not of this world. There is hatred of an act, I understand, but I don't want to think about that. It's not even hatred of an act, it's hatred of being away from God. Hatred of being away from Godhood. Hatred of being away from your ultimate destiny and potential. I mean, I know that sounds Mormon, and maybe that even sounds Gnostic. Sure, I understand, but that's not the point. The point is that you can be as perfect as you can if you are. Hatred of being away from the truth. It's not hatred, though. It's not hatred. It's, 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 it's grief. It's grief. See, that's what you, that's what, that's what people don't understand. Grief. What you feel as a god when you see the despicable Satanism. It's not hatred, it's grief. 
Hatred is a social construct. How's that? Ill will towards your fellow men and women is a social construct. How's that? But just know that it's not hatred that protects children. It's love. It's wisdom. It's love. It's not hatred. It's not even violence. To protect innocence is God. Yeah, C.S. Lewis does have the best articulation of what it means to be a noble knight. Meek and civil on the dinner table and fierce in the battlefield because love protects with violence. Love protects with violence. Does it though? There is no violence in love. That violence that you're saying is love. Love is violence to the wicked. You see what I mean? If you are a wicked, savage abuser, and love knocks on your door and you open it up, you die. It is not a violent thing. It was not violence. It was only love. But love is only violent to the wicked. Something that is abusing children that you kill, you think that's an act of violence? <laughs> no, it is not an act of violence. So anyway, we're not gonna get into too much of that because you're gonna live in a reality where the people that abuse children are putting you in jail for hate speech. You're gonna live through that. Just giving you a heads up. You already do. Yeah, that shit's crazy. It's scaring me, the stuff that we talked about tonight, actually. There's something about that. The violence, the love. There is no violence in love. There is no love in violence. Bush almost had it right when they said there's no sex in violence. But that's true, too. That is true. There is no sex in violence. There's no sex in violence. There's no love in violence, either. There's no violence in love. There's no sex in violence. There's no violence in sex. You get that? Violent sex happens, Emoto. No, it doesn't. Violent sex does not happen. If there is consensual sex of a certain vigor, that's one thing, but there is no violence in sex. There's not. It's a spiritual thing. It's sacred reality. You're right. There is no violence in sex. No, no, that's fake. That's something you hear from the pornographers. That's something you hear from the rapists. The word sex as it is shouldn't exist. There's no word for what we all think about the spiritual mingling, the closest thing to what it would be something in Sanskrit. That's true, man. The sex that, when we use the word sex, you think of two lions having a shag in the woods. You see what I mean with the language, though? You, clearly, you understand. Don't you remember getting sexually abused? Don't you remember hearing the radio back in the day when you were five, six, seven years old? Songs like, Let's talk about sex. Don't, is it only me that remembers being sexually abused as a child by the media? Is it only me? It is not only me that gets that treatment. Perhaps it is only me that knows it happened. Movies are the same thing. You get raped when you watch them. I, I, I mean, it is what it is. It's irrefutable. That's why movies exist. This isn't even something that's arguable. It is what it is. It's black magic. Don't you remember peep the song People Are Still Having Sex by Latour when you were a child? Do you, don't you remember watching MTV and, and, and having songs on there? People are still having sex. And also the song Let's Talk About Sex. Do you remember that as a child being sexually abused by the music industry? Do you remember that? Anyone remember that? I do. There's no hatred. There is only pity at the machines that put that in motion because they will surely reap what they deserve. Surely they shall. I remember that. I've known for a long time. I've known ever since I was bef I was seven years old that the people on the radio and the people on the TV elsewhere, let me just leave it at that. I haven't been able to, art to articulate it, but I know. I know. Anyway. You think about it. We're not going to think about it too long. But those who understand the weight behind it can think about it for a moment. It, it, it was a rape. It actually was a rape. Now that I think about it, it was a spiritual violation unto a child. Unwillingly, unwittingly. It actually was. You can be sure that your lexicon or vernacular will be filled with only denigration. Towards God, towards yourself, towards spirituality, towards piety, towards morality. You can be sure all of your language will be tailored uh, to be adversarial to those things. Interestingly enough, coincidentally enough, it's only just a coincidence, isn't it?
Thank you.